Yeah, no. So, I'm just not clear. Who, who do you think would have planted the evidence? The cops, you mean, or? I don't know. Family member, citizen, what do you think? Just be honest. It's, it's, that's fine. No matter what you At say. times, I think Chucky could have done it. What makes you think that? Because he wants to go out with me. Why? He always has. So you think Chucky would take somebody and kill them and burn them just so he could go out with you? Get Steve in trouble and get him out of the picture? Yeah. Could have. I don't know. It's so much goes on through my head. It's I'll bet you it does. Well, just think about just think about the facts of the case for a little bit. Where would Chucky get Steve's blood? I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to try to convince you to be, you know to believe one way or another, but the facts are what the facts are, and you know that. Mm -hmm. I think deep down in your heart you know what happened. You really do. And it's probably hard for you to come to terms with that since you've had a relationship with him, would be my guess. It would be for anybody. Nobody wants to think that somebody that they care about and love would do something like that. But I don't think he really loves you, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay? Yeah. I think he's using you. I think once he gets out, he's going to use you more. Well... <laughs> Monday, when we talked, he told me it's my fault that if I wasn't in here now, this wouldn't have happened. What do you think he meant by that? I don't know. What do you think he meant that by that? If this? I wasn't in here now, I don't know. That's just the way he said it. If this wouldn't have happened. What do you, what, what's your first gut reaction to that comment? What do you mean if this wouldn't have, what are you, what are you talking about? What, what what was the first thing that ran through your head when you heard that? It's kind of a bizarre statement, isn't it? Yeah. So he's blaming what happened. Me being in here now. Is, is, for is why this stuff happened to him. Yeah. I told him, if, even if I wasn't here, this would have happened. And he said, no, I wouldn't have. Why, you would have protected him or something? <laughs> I, or what? I, you know? Is that what do you think he's getting at? Is this stuff meaning her dying? Him killing case. her wouldn't have happened? Is that what he's, I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't me. question him because it didn't dawn on me until we hung up. Mm -hmm. What did you think about after you hung up? What did you think about what he said? Thought he's an idiot. Where in the world would that comment come from, huh? Yeah. Well, what I'm going to do, Jody, is I'm going to play a, a phone conversation for you, okay? It happened to be on Monday, okay? What time did you talk to him? Eight. Okay. Well, this is prior to you and him talking then, okay? And it's a phone conversation between him and Debbie, okay? Because I think you need to know what's going on. You know, he's obviously lying to you. You want to listen to that with us? Yeah. Okay. And that's why I asked you before, what's going to make up your mind actually hearing it? Yeah. Is that what's going to do it for you? There's no way we can manipulate voices, okay? Yeah, I know. You know, his mom can talk all she wants about we could have done this or that to the letters to, you know, alter those or what we need. I gotta wake this baby up first. But she could have every excuse. That's not the case, but voices, you know his voice. Mm -hmm. This obviously isn't your voice, the female, okay? And it's her phone number. You need somebody here to help you? I mean, computers don't always get along, Julie. <laughs> you know how it is? Yep. It's not awake. Uh oh. It fell asleep on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How come she ain't waking up on me? Something's 
blink and move and it's like There we go. Mm -hmm. Hello? This is a public communication services collect call from... Yes, Pete. An inmate at the Calumet County Jail. The use of Monday or a call waiting will disconnect the call. Prior this call to you. will be monitored okay. and recorded. To accept this call, dial 5 now. Hello? Hello? Do you recognize Hi. Voice? All right. That's Debbie. Did you try calling earlier? Yeah. I oh, never heard Debbie's voice. Room. My sister goes, why did you answer the phone? It was ringing and I didn't hear it because I was in the living room and that was in the kitchen. Oh.
people just like to drag things out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Did you hear about that on TV? The Calumet County Police had to go to a standoff or something about someone who wanted to um, commit suicide uh, on TV. It was tonight. Yeah. I forgot where they said it was now. Somewhere north of Green Bay. North of Green Bay? Yeah. Somewhere north of Green Bay. I forgot the name of the town. Yeah. Anyways, well, if it was north of Green Bay, it couldn't have been Calumet County, so it couldn't have been north of Green Bay. It might must be thinking of something else. Because it was in Calumet County, wherever it was. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Did you watch the news tonight? No, it's just 6 o'clock now. Yeah. I mean, it, you didn't watch it at 5.30? No. Oh, yeah. okay. Or at 5, I should say, because yeah. it's not at 5 and then yeah. 6. 5.30 is the world. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. What a day. I ain't going nowhere hardly. I ain't going anywhere all day. Yeah. Oh, you went to work? Well, yeah, but I mean, like, I didn't go to town or anything like that. Yeah, I went to work. I got there about 10 to 6, and I left, I think, at 10.30. Oh. Yeah, 10.30, I left. Tomorrow will be a longer day, because I got to fit in all the cabs. Mm. So that took an extra, extra, probably 45 minutes or something. So. Well, my daughter must be getting laid off, I bet. Why? Uh, cutting jobs in Hamilton. Oh, that was on the news at Two Rivers? Yeah. It's yes? That's where she worked. A whole bunch of them were. They said laid off for at least three months, if not indefinite. Yeah. So they said how many people were laid off? 35 or something? Yeah. I forgot what they said, but a bunch of them. <laughs> what do they do there? I don't know what that works at. Oh. There's a steel plant and work plant. Oh. Yeah. From the Calumet County Jail, this call will be monitored or recorded. Yeah. I hope you don't get laid off, because then that means you've got to find a different job, and it's not easy finding jobs. I know. <coughs> and not only that, huh? She's going find one. Yeah. It's not easy finding them, and then when you do find them, you got to take a while to get trained. How old's your daughter? Twenty or something? Uh, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, somewhere in there. Mm, yeah. My daughter is twenty-two. She'll be twenty-three next month. Oh, she's been twenty-two or something. Yeah. I still want to know and talk to me. Mhm. Mm Which one? Rachel. Oh. Now can you believe twenty-two or twenty-three? I don't know. She was born in 1983. I can figure it out. Yeah. Whatever. Huh? 1983. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I made cookies today. You made what? Cookies. Oh, yeah? Peanut butter cookies. Oh. But they don't, I didn't put enough peanut butter in them because they didn't have a very much peanut butter taste. But I did, like the direction, they said put in one cup of peanut butter, and I did, but I should have put probably in a cup and a half or something. Oh, well. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't bake very often. Yeah. But I know how, if I have to. You probably know how to cook good. Yeah. Because you have to make your own food. Yeah.
And he said, what, your uncle gave her $200 every month for money. And I thought, no, this don't make sense because you said she worked at Arabs in Brilliant. That's when she was in the county jail. Oh. Um, you know, the first time. Oh, um, and I thought, well, it makes more sense that she worked at Arabs in Brilliant. Because it don't seem like someone would give her $200 every month. No. Wow. Well,
wants to call me, she can, but it makes her feel better. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll say it takes one to know one. <laughs>
out or something went wrong. Yeah. I just have someone check the fuel with maybe that yeah. ain't working. Yeah. So, well, sometimes the tail lights weren't working and then when we're putting different fuels in and then they work. Yeah. Or, yeah. And you know, this mechanic we got here, I don't like him. Yeah. He's the normal. He's the way to the only reason I go to him is because then when we're at pay the bill. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
He's an asshole. He's an asshole. <clears throat> well, you know what? He can't deny this. I mean, it's there. It's black and white, okay? I'd like to see what kind of excuse he's going to come up with that, but like I said, he's probably going to flip it around and turn it right back at you, throw Chucky in there in a mix of things and make you feel bad and jump all over your case. Well, I won't feel bad. He's going to try and turn her on you. Oh, yeah. Push her off for him. He probably don't want her any. Sure, he's going to blame because you and Chucky had a relationship. That's what he normally does, my understanding. But we never had a relationship. I know, but he seems to think that for some reason, from my understanding, for talking to people. Let me ask you a question. When, when did you get together with Steve the first time? The end of May, June. Of what year? Two 
2004. Okay. Nine months after he got out. Okay. Do you remember his car being burned? Back in 04? Car of his allegedly being stolen. He found burned in a field. His sisters? It could have been his sisters, yeah. Remember that? A blazer, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you know about that? That somebody stole it and they reported it. Where was it stolen from? I believe it was her yard. I was sick that them, that week. Were you home yeah. during that? In bed. Was Steve with you? At night when he was done working up at the junkyard. Did he ever tell you anything about that? No. You sure? Who would know that it was there that they would come down and even be able to steal it? Way down I there. I have no idea. Doesn't that seem a little bit odd? Way down there where nobody really knows who's living there or... It's not like it's right on the main drag where somebody would see a car that they want to steal. Yeah. Why would somebody steal a car and just go burn it up? No. I have no idea. That doesn't make much sense to me, does it to you? If you're going to steal a car, you're going to steal it for a purpose, and that would be to use it. Or to sell it, or to parts it out, something. Something? Mm hmm That makes sense. Does it make sense to you that somebody would just steal it and take it and drive it into a field and burn it? Not really. No. Well, it doesn't make sense to me either. I think Steve had something to do with that. I have no idea. You sure? Yeah. He never said a word to you about it? No. Never questioned him on it? No. So you just took it at face value that it was stolen? Yeah. Seem odd to you, though? I mean, does any of this stuff seem odd to you? Or does Steve just have a lot of bad luck? After what you just heard. If everything that happens to Steve is bad luck, well, I'll tell you what. You've got the worst fucking luck I've ever seen yeah, in the world. Yeah, he does. You know? That's pretty bad luck. Seems that everything Steve does, he's got an excuse for. Or a way to lie himself out of it. Like he lied to you right yeah. after this phone call. So some of this has got to be clicking with you. This guy isn't right. You know, and I don't know that it's all Steve's fault. I think Steve has some mental issues. I think that's pretty evident. I know one time uh, Chucky told him that he needed to go to counseling. Mm -hmm. But he said no, he didn't. Did he say for what? Anger management or something? Or just, you just need to they were just counseling. arguing and Chucky up and said that. Yeah. What do you think? Think he needs some? Anger management, yeah. Well, obviously you see an anger problem there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like I said before, you know, you've got the safety of a phone between you two. Jody, what do you think would happen if you confronted him with the homicide and the sexual assault allegations? Don't you think he'd come unglued? Look what he did to you when you brought up Marie. And just so you know, before you answer that, I just want to let you know, you're not the one that started this investigation on Oh, I know. Okay, so he's trying to pin this all on you, but... Anyway, back to my original thought, I mean... You know he's got an anger problem, Jody. If I confront her, I don't know what he'd do. Let's go down the list of things that he's done, that we know about. Just that we know about. From the time he committed the burglary, which got him in trouble. And he doesn't even take responsibility for that. He says, well, he wasn't really... What burglary? The one to the um, the bar that got him in trouble. Oh, that I have no idea anything okay. about that. Well, you knew about it, though, I'm assuming. No. You didn't know he was involved in some burglaries? No. Hmm. So he hasn't told you everything, huh? I never really questioned him about his past. Okay. Well, well, let me give you a little bit about his past. He's involved in a burglary, which he served jail time for out at Harps Lake. Then he's involved with the cat burning incident, whether he's put the cat on fire or not. 
I tend to believe that he had more to do with it than he's telling you. Were you there? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> then you probably pretty much can tell that he did more of it than he's telling you. He's minimizing it like, like he does with everything, okay? So he does that. Then he ends up exposing himself to some lady who's driving by the house all the time, and then he ends up, the lady ends up reporting him, and he ends up running her off the road and taking her at gunpoint just about. God, what do you think would have happened to her if he, you think she'd be up walking around today? Was it because she had a baby in the backseat mm -hmm. again? It's the only reason he didn't. It means he's got some heart to him. He's got some common be. sense and judgment, at least, but if she went and had that baby back there, what do you think would happen to her? Nothing. Nothing? You don't think nothing would happen? Do you think that's normal for somebody to go... He likes to scare road? people. I think that's a little more than scaring somebody. Yeah. Gun was loaded. You know what I think? If that baby wouldn't have been in there, we'd have another missing person. This lady been dead. It's not what I think, it's what I know. I know that's what will happen. I think deep down you know that too. You know he would have killed her. Just like he killed Teresa. Same way. Kills Teresa. Puts her body in a burn pit. Burns her up. Takes her truck. Attempts to hide it. Covers it up with sticks and other hoods and stuff from the junkyard to try to hide it until he can get back on Saturday and crush it and get rid of it. Unfortunately, we found it before he had the chance. Do you know what he's going to use as an excuse? You. He's going to come down to visit you is what he's going to tell his family on Saturday. And he wasn't going to come see you. He's going to come and crush the truck and get rid of it. He had to because that's the only evidence. He knew if we didn't find the truck, we had nothing. But unfortunate for him, we found the truck. Screwed him. He lies, lies, lies until he gets caught in a lie. I'll give you another example how he lied about the fire. First he said he never had a fire. He said, well, when he got caught, because people saw the fire, including his sister, okay, yeah, I guess I did have a fire. And that was on the news. He clearly admitted that on the news. Yeah, that the, I've seen. The pathological liar. He'll do anything. It's never his fault. It's always your fault, or his sister's fault, or his mom's fault, or always somebody else's fault. Do you notice that when you try to pin something on him or yeah. confront him about Debbie, he turns it around and says something about Chuck or blames you for this Marie thing? He always wants to take the heat off himself. It's all about him. Yeah. Jody, he killed her. Cold blood. A defenseless woman. 25, 25 years old. She's out there trying to do a job. You know what's really sick? He's 25 year old female cannot go and do her job without running into somebody like that. You know, it's probably fortunate that I carry a 45 on my side because who knows what would happen to me yeah. some of the dirt bags I see. I just don't think he did it. Why wouldn't he kill me? He. I don't talk to my family. They went to notice me missing. You know what, Jody? He didn't have to kill you because, you know what, he was getting what he wanted off of you. You know what that was? Yeah. yeah. Sex. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Where were you when this happened? In here. What did he just say on the phone conversation to you? If I wasn't in here, it wouldn't have happened. Mm hmm He wanted sex. He couldn't get it. He tried to force her. She resisted, and he killed her. The evidence is all there. He killed her. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. And you can shake your head all you I, want. I you just, know it. I, I, you know he killed her. There's no way anybody else killed her. He can't account for his time during the time when she was there. He's there alone. He doesn't go back to work. I hmm, wonder why that is, because he's upset he just killed somebody. Jody, you're talking to the lead investigator in this. <laughs> okay? He knows the timeline. He knows the insides and outs of this case. Okay? However, I don't know that much, but... He knows her timeline, where she was, the phone calls. He knows Steve. He, he, he talked to Steve. Okay? There's so much I know that you don't know, but I can't even tell you. And make your head spin. Oh, I believe it. You know what was different between you and Teresa? Teresa didn't have the time to spend with him prior to that. He couldn't manipulate her and control her. And when he made the moves and, and, and the passes at her, she fought back.
because she's a feisty lady. All right? And what happens when you fight back and confront Steve? You get hit? You want to say that you were drunk and make those excuses because he told you to keep your mouth shut? Hear me out, all right? You get in arguments, Marie, okay. He threatens her, he threatens her family. If you talk, if you don't cooperate, do what I want, I'm going to hurt your mom, I'm going to hurt your dad, I'm going to burn your house down. I'm going to take those things away. He is controlling everybody from his jail cell, Jody. He is controlling you. He's controlling Marie. He's controlling his mother, Barb, Earl, and even sometimes Chuck. And he's all doing that in a 5 by 9 cell. That's pathetic. What do you think he's going to kill next? If he gets out, do you think he's going to stop? No. He is so pissed off at you right now, Jody. If, if I were you, I would be worried. I really would. I'm sorry, but I would be worried. I see the history of the females in his life. I've seen what he's done when he gets angry. I've seen what he's done when you're gone. Okay? There's a very obvious pattern there. And I haven't known, I didn't know Steve from Adam until this case came out. I didn't know you. Did you ever sit down and think what he did to that poor girl? I bet you it runs through your mind, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's a, I just... He did it, okay? If I could share everything with you, besides the evidence that's already out there, which you know, my God, girl, think about it. If I could share the other half of it, I have nothing to gain by him going to prison or him going free. I never met Steve Avery prior to. I never met you prior to. I never met Teresa Halbach prior to. I have nothing to gain. That's why I was called in. That's why we were called in as independent because of his prior contact with Manitowoc County. So we had nothing to gain or lose. We went in and took a look at the facts. The laboratories don't lie. I have no reason to lie. I have no reason to cover up for anybody, nor would I. I'm only going off of the facts. Okay? What we're trained to do. I've been doing this job a long time. Cool. I've met a lot of people. I've met a lot of interesting people, a lot of people that are similar to Steve, but I've never met somebody as cold-blooded as him. To think what he did to that girl. Sit and think about that for a minute. Think about her family. I do all the time. Well, I hope you do. Because by sticking up for him, what does that make you look like? Well, I know, but... He killed her. I just, I just... He killed her. He's the only one to see her. He's the last one to see her. He's the only one who sees her in that time frame. Think about that. She just disappears? Yeah, she disappears because he killed her. And he hid her until he could take her out and put her in that burn pit that night, which he initially denied even burning. Then when he got caught at the lie, then he had to admit to it. That's the kind of person you want to spend the rest of your life with? And now he's not going to marry you because it's not convenient for him? No. no What's up with that? He's slipping his dick into Debbie. You heard it. No. Yeah. You heard him say he loves her. What do you think he'd do if you were still in here and he got out? Think he'd check up with her? You heard it. What do you think he'd do? You know damn well he would because he needs it. He's got a sex issue. Mm-hmm. You told us yourself, was it three or four times a day sometimes? In the beginning, yeah. Mm -hmm. You think that's normal? Think he's got a few issues? You heard for yourself what he said to you, that the only reason that this has happened is because you were in here. Think about that statement. Pretty powerful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Do you think that's him, his way of admitting it to you? Don't you think? Sounds like it to me. We wouldn't bring this stuff with Debbie here to hurt you anymore. Oh, I know. Okay? But you need some truth in this. Okay? And I think without hearing it from your own ears, you're not going to believe us. 
there's no way we can change the voices, do any kind of framing or planting or whatever his mom and he thinks. Yeah. It's right there, okay? This is technology, it's a CD, it's a computer. You, it, that's his voice, yeah. okay? There's no way we can alter it. That was Debbie. And you knew that by the information in the letters of what Steve said. Yeah. I'd never seen those letters, so only you know what was written in there. Regardless of what he says, we're not some malicious, nasty cops trying to suck you in to believing what we want you to believe, yeah. okay, Jody? Do I look like some mean, nasty person that <laughs> no. wants to beat you into submission and, and make you talk? No. No. We know the stuff he's done to you, okay? If you want to admit it or not, you've told us this much of the things he's done to you, okay? I know that because you've shared it with other people who have told us, okay? We know how he used to beat your ass. He did it more than once. It wasn't just a slap or two. When you were drunk to blow it off. We know that. He beat the shit out of you. We all know it. You wanted family to help you at one point to get the hell out of there, but you were afraid to. You know what, Jody, you don't have to say anything, okay? We do our homework and we talk to a lot of people. A lot, okay? That's how the Marie stuff came back. Don't be thinking that you were the one that did this, okay? And he may think that, but whatever, okay? We know the bruises, the times he's beat your ass. You we showed people the bruises. Yeah, you did. You told them what happened. You begged people for help, but you were scared to, to leave. And he's still controlling you right now. And you allow it to happen. Even some of his own family members think he's guilty, including his sister who said it. Chuck has alluded to it. Earl. At one time or another, they've all thought that he's guilty. But so they know he gets his claws back on him, manipulates him again, gets them to think what he's thinking or makes them, and they go back on his side. Once people are pulled away from that, the control, the manipulation in that, they start seeing what's there, the facts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. It's 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 pretty pathetic that a person like that has got so much control over so many people in a jail cell. It really is. Do you have that much control over people? <laughs> no. No, not at all. He's good. He's good with making people feel like crap. Yeah, he is. Mhm. Mm Think about everything we've told you today, all the way from the start, leading up to him killing her, and us knowing everything he did to you. Still think he's a good guy? Something you want to live with? He's got issues. Got issues? <laughs> he killed a 25-year-old woman and burned her body? <laughs> Mutilated the corpse? Had sex with his niece, did burglaries, burnt cats? I mean, come Forced on. Forced the lady off the road at gunpoint, the only reason he didn't kill her was because she had a baby in the car? He's got issues? Yeah, I think he's got issues, all right. Threaten to burn Marie's house down? See, I didn't know any of that. No, we're telling you. There it is. He's trying to fuck some other girl. You heard it for yourself. Yeah. While well, you're sitting in here, again. He doesn't give a shit about you. You know that. He's using you because you were an easy lay for him. That's all he thought about. And you didn't have anybody to go to, so he controlled you, manipulated you, you had nowhere to go, so you had to depend on him. He said it. Did you yeah. not hear that? I supported her. Bullshit, Jody. You can support yourself. He blames you for him killing the girl. Sit her right on the phone to you. Without saying her name. Without stating that. So he's even trying to blame you for the murder. Isn't that nice? Issues? I think yeah. so. You know what scares me right now, Jody? If Debbie wasn't in the picture and he got out, who would it be next? Would he go back after Marie? Would there be other some innocent photographer coming out to do some freelancing for him? 
and those pieces of junk cars. Some FedEx saleswoman that's alone by herself. Some stupid blonde cop from Calumet that shows up by herself. Who do you think the next victim would be? It's sick to think about, and it's scary to think about, Jody. You know that what? Is. It really opens my eyes, too. Is there anything, Jordy, that you want to tell us that you haven't so far? No. Because if there is, now's the time. Because as you can tell on there, he's blaming you. He's trying to blame you. As you can tell on the phone conversation, he's blaming you for what he did. Okay? You understand you don't have to talk to us. You don't have to tell us anything. You can walk right back out of this door. But if there's something that maybe you thought of that maybe you forgot to tell us or maybe we're scared to, I think now's probably the time that you need to do that because you can see the door is starting to shut on him and he's desperate. Hence his conversation with you saying that it's basically your fault because you're in here. Otherwise it wouldn't have happened. So he's really getting desperate. And I can tell you other things that he said. He's even said that... Um, he was thinking of turning candy in for having something to do with this murder. Yeah. You know why? He can't stand her and he's pissed off at her because she reported that incident in 04. Well, you know what he so does to people when he's pissed off? Yeah. He knows candy had nothing to do with it because he's the only one that was there. He's the one that killed her. But he is so desperate right now. So I'm trying to say is there's something that you haven't told us. You really need to tell us. There ain't. Okay. I'll take your word for that. And I ain't gonna lie for him. If, if there was, I would. What about yourself? I mean, you, only, you, you told us a little bit about what he's done to you. What else has he done to you that you haven't told us about? That's it. Just hit you a few times? No. Yeah. What about all the That's... bruises you have on you? That's not true. I know he hit you more than a few times, Jody. No, not really, no. No, it's, it's not a not really. It's a yes or no, and I know uh, he no. has. Them few times I said, that was it. You know what? This isn't going to put more charges on him. This oh, isn't going to come up in more reports. He's not going to be able to say, my attorneys tell me that you've said more to the cops. That That's not, that's not the point. Oh, I know. Okay. But There's been no. several occasions with many people that you've shown bruises, admitted... You got the shit beat out of you, so it's more than just a few times. A few times is three or four. That's you've all it was. With, you've been with him for quite a while. And he stopped. Why? Because he threatened to call the cops? No, I did call the cops on him. Was that after he stopped then, or what? He stopped after I got out of jail last time. What about Marie? What else do you know about Marie? Obviously, you were very suspicious for a long time. Obviously, you knew more, a little bit more than I think you've told us so far about Marie. The only thing I knew is that he told me he fucked her twice. Did he say where he did it? Up north and in Barbara's house. Did he say when he did it? No. Obviously, it was before you, It was right? when we were, after we started going out. Yeah, he was already with you when he was having sex with her. Um, Up north and in Barbara's house? Yeah. What did he say about that? Did he say she was a willing participant? Or did he laugh about it and say, yeah, uh, I like did her a Like yeah, I had a young piece of ass or what? Or did he say it out of anger? Said it out of anger because we were... Because you are fighting about it and you accused him and he said, yeah, I fucked her twice. Yeah. And then you, did you say, well, where'd you do that? And you set up north in Barb's house, or what? No, the one time he told me it was up north, we were, that's when he told me he fucked her. And it was up north, and Candy almost walked in on him. The other time at Barb's house, I just took for granted that's where it was. He never said yes or no. Do you go into detail about up north? No. Was it after that stupid marker fight they had or some crap? 
Yeah. Is after that? What did he tell you about that? How There's obviously about? pictures, letters, I shit like that. I knew nothing about them. Okay. Well, how do you know it was during the marker thing? Tell me what you I didn't know about the marker fight. Okay. Just, oh, okay. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Tell me exactly what he told you about up north. Just that he fucked her up there. And Candy almost walked in. Yeah, on. and that was it. Where up north? I would imagine their cabin. I don't know. Their cabin? Does Candy and Earl have a second yeah. one? And then Dolores yeah. and Alan. So it would have been Earl and Candy's cabin? As far as I know, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm assuming, too, if they had Earl and Candy have a cabin. Did he say whose cabin it was in nope. that this happened? And he said that Candy just about walked it out. Yeah. It just, uh, I find it weird <laughs> how this is just brought up. I mean, he just says, yeah, I fucked her up north, and Candy almost walked in. I mean, and the conversation ends. Yeah, because I told him, get his shit and get the hell out. Then what do you do? Start packing his shit and... You gave in and told him not to leave? Yeah. How did I figure that? <laughs> I don't know. Where did he tell you this? At home, in the trailer. When did he tell you this? Uh, I couldn't even remember. A year ago? You said it was shortly after you started seeing him? Yeah. Had to have been in August. Of 04, probably, right? Yeah. yeah. End of August, early September. Mm -hmm. Did you ever ask Marie about this? No. Never accused Marie of sleeping with your boyfriend or anything like that? Never talked to her. Never talked to her? He told me she initiated it. She's the one that started it. You believe that? At the time. Do you believe it now? I don't know. So what's your life going to be like now, Joey? I don't know. Well, think about it. What are you going to do? Are you going to accept, accept some help from us? Or are you just going to go back to a guy who viciously killed somebody, some innocent girl, and threw her in a fire? This might be <clears throat> Hello, this is my name. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. choices to make in this life, Joy. Okay? And life is difficult, there's no doubt about it, but we all have choices to make. That's part of being an adult. Sometimes it's a good part about it being an adult, sometimes it's a bad part about being an adult. But we get to this crossroads in our life. And you can turn right, you can turn left, and that's where you are. Okay? You have the option of going right or left. Right just to get your life back on track. Get the hell away from him and that family. Left us to go back into that situation which you were in. Get beat up. Maybe worse. Maybe you end up in the fire the next time. So you have some choices to make. Okay. You have some good people around here, including Wendy, that has offered to help you in any way she can. Maybe you should seize that opportunity. Well, I've been thinking about it. You need to do more than think about I it. Know. You're at that crossroads, remember that. Right or left. You go left, you might not live. You go right, you can maybe start over, see your daughter. Be a mother like you want to be. I know you do. I know you care for that girl. That's pretty obvious when I talk to you about her. I bet you missed the hell out of her. And don't you think that she sits there and talks about mommy, where's mommy, what's mommy doing? I bet she does. How old is she? 12. 
12? You remember being 12? Remember how you used to feel about your mom? Yeah. Don't you think she feels the same way? Heck, I can remember being 12. I remember being 12 and, and worrying about my mommy. Where is she? What's she doing? She's probably thinking, wondering where the heck you are right now. Wondering why you haven't been around. And you had that opportunity. In 18 days, you had that opportunity to do the right thing. And forget about yourself for a minute. What's your daughter's name? Tiffany. Think about Tiffany. Think about Tiffany for a minute. Think she probably needs you? Like you needed your mom when you were 12? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got some decisions to make. Okay. And I know there's more. I know you have more knowledge of a lot of the stuff that we talked about today. Not everything. But I know you have a little bit more knowledge of some things. Okay? Not really. And I know you haven't told us everything he's done to you. And I hope someday you can come to terms with that and, and speak out and help other people. By speaking out, you help your daughter. But if it was your daughter who went to his trailer and he tried to make a move on her and she resisted and he kills her, Puts her in a fire. I think about that all the time. Bad enough killing somebody, but to mutilate their body and to burn them up. A pretty young girl. Now imagine that being Tiffany. What would you do? <laughs> I'd lose my mind and I'd probably go on a murdering spree. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here talking to you today. We want your help. And by help, I mean we want your side of the story about everything that you know about him. I've told what I know and what he's done to me. Okay. Well, I'm not going to sit here and push you, but I'm, I'm trying to, I'm honestly trying to help you go down the right path here. Okay? You've done nothing wrong. Yeah, you're here for some bullshit drunk driving yeah. stuff. Big deal. Everybody has those once in their lifetime, twice in their lifetime. A lot of people have three or four in their lifetime. It happens. Okay? But it appears as though you've been willing to try to clean your life up. You need to take that extra step and go further. Yeah, I know. Because if you don't, you know what's going to happen. You may end up in the same place Teresa is. Or worse yet, some poor stranger albeit somebody like your daughter Tiffany or somebody else's daughter could end up like that. Yeah. Is that what you want? No. Do you want a guy who sits there and tells another girl he was going to put his wiener in her and says that he loves her? you want a guy like that? No. Then why don't you let us help you? We're willing to do that. We don't owe you anything. You don't owe us anything. But sometimes we try to do the right thing, believe it or not. Yeah, cops aren't always bad. <laughs> I know that. We try to help people. That's our job. We want to help you, too. Because I don't want to see you become a victim. No. Okay. Okay. Okay, anything else? Do you have any questions or anything? No, the time. No. No, nothing at all. No comments. No, I'm soaking everything in right now. Okay. Well, I want you to think about the stuff we talked about today, okay? And I'll give you my card. If you want, you can call me. Oh, you really can't from here, can you? Um, I don't know. They'd probably let me if I talked to the guards. Okay. And I don't know who you feel more comfortable talking with, Wendy or myself. That's up to you. I'll give you my card. You have hers as well. Oh. You can call either one of us. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm sure after you get out of here and some of this soaks in, and you're going to think of some things that maybe you forgot about. Okay. Some things that maybe he said or some things that he's done that you may have forgot to tell us. And I understand that. I mean, you got a lot of shit going through your mind. Man, I know that. Believe me. It's tough. 
You didn't ask for this. No. You didn't ask to be in this position. He put you here. And now he's trying to blame you. Just like he said he wanted to call the cops and tell them that Candy had something to do with this lady's murder. Hmm. If he's innocent, don't you think he'd just say, I don't fucking know what happened? I have no idea. I didn't do it. No, he's looking for people to blame. First it was going to be Candy. He even mentioned the Earl. And then, basically, he's talking to you. Now it's your fault. Because you were in here. You made him do it. Because he couldn't get sex anywhere else. It's pretty evident to me, with all the evidence that's there. And again, there's so much that I can't tell you about. You knew what I knew. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And you will someday. But I hope it's not too late for you at that point. I hope he doesn't try to set you up, which it appears to me he's trying to lay the groundwork to do. Set you up if somehow you had something to do with some of this. Or that you had some knowledge of it. Because he's not going to go down alone, you know that. He's not the type that's going to go down alone. He's already made that pretty evident. By going to blame Candy, blame Earl. Now he's starting to turn towards you. He's going to try not to go down alone. He's going to try to blame as many people as he can, point fingers, and try to drag somebody into it. Even if it's just that you knew about it, or just that Candy knew about it, or just that Earl knew about it. Just that they helped me get rid of the body. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Do I think that? No. But I think he acted alone. But he's going to try that. I guarantee you. He's been doing his job a long time. I know his type. It's the people I deal with every day. So you know he's going to try to start pointing fingers. He's already started at you. Think about that. I don't think you want to try to work your, out, you know, work your way out of something you absolutely have no knowledge over. <laughs> but that's what he's going to try to do. It's pretty evident to me. So you think about this stuff, okay? And uh, you give us a call. I know you're out of here in 18 days. I hope to hear from you before then. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, if you don't want to talk to me, that's fine. You can talk to Wendy. And if you don't want to talk to Wendy, you can talk to me. Either way, okay? We'll listen to you and we'll help you. And it gets about time you need to get out of here. After your 18 days, prior to, if you need some help, call us. We will set you up somewhere, you know? Because I don't want to see you go back there. No. Because I don't know how welcome you're going to be, to be honest with you. I've been thinking that, too. Think about it. You got anything else you want to talk about? No. Snowstorm coming? No, <laughs> definitely not that. Well, you don't have to shovel. It's one good thing. Yeah. I like to be out there, though. Mm. Do they get you out of the cell to go do anything at all? No, help in the kitchen, help clean, mm. help do anything? Laundry. Laundry. But I ain't going to do that. Mm -hmm. Are you in a cell by yourself? No. Or? Ten other girls are out there. Ten other girls? Excuse your feet. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, uh, I think we're probably finished. Sorry I had to leave you with this. <laughs> she's got some things to think about, we've talked about, and she's going to give us a call. She's got your card, right? Yep. I'm going to give her mine. My beautiful pink card. Yep. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> you know, your guy I doesn't. Let me grab one for you here, young lady. So about that truck of his that burned up, you know anything about that at all? No. No, you sure? Just that was Barbara's, not yeah. his. How about we go out and have another smoke? That sounds good. Sound good? Get a little tension, tension releaser and, you know, kind of get some of the stress. Is Dave in there? Yes? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Maybe he could lead us down, what do you think? Sounds good to me. All right. We better ask his permission, though. He's running the show yeah. here. We don't I'm, sure piss. I'm sure it's going to be fine. We don't want to piss him off. <laughs> He's actually the one that said, ask her if she wants to know, and I'll take her down there. So. All right. We'll take you down there, right? Okay. Have another walk in the fresh air before you go back in.